Let's get weird into it. Number 10. The Phantom Fall. Imagine this. You've had a long day. You finally crawl into bed. Your muscles unwind. Your thoughts soften into a nice soupy mush. You're on the very edge of sleep, about to slip into that sweet, dark oblivion. And then, bam. For a split second, you're not in your bed. You're tripping off a curb, falling off a cliff. Your stomach leaps into your throat, and your whole body spasms in a violent flailing jerk that rips you back into the waking world, heart pounding. Congratulations, your brain just tried to murder you in a dream and then panicked. This is called a hypnic jerk, and it's one of the first and most common glitches your brain experiences when it's shutting down for the night. Here's the dumbed down science. Going to sleep isn't like flipping a light switch. It's more like a clumsy, disorganized shutdown of a giant, ancient factory. Your consciousness clocks out first. Then your motor control center starts powering down. But sometimes the wires get crossed. As your muscles relax completely, your brain, in its tired, foggy state, misinterprets this sudden relaxation as, well, as you falling to your death. It's a catastrophic failure of context. Your brain's sensory department screams, we're going down. And your motor control, which was supposed to be off-duty, gets an emergency page. It fires off a massive panicked signal to all your muscles. Brace for impact. This causes that full-body twitch that feels like you've been electrocuted. Some scientists think it's an evolutionary leftover from our primate ancestors who slept in trees. A muscle twitch would help them readjust their position on a branch before they actually took a tumble. So when you're jolted awake, it's just the ghost of your inner monkey having a little panic attack. Your brain isn't trying to save you from a phantom cliff. It's trying to save you from a tree that hasn't existed for a million years. Number 9. The Shadow People It's the middle of the night. You're hovering in that weird, swampy state between sleep and awake. You open your eyes. Just a crack. And you see it. A figure standing in the corner of your room. It's tall, dark, and has no features. Just a vaguely human-shaped void. It doesn't move. It just... stands there. Watching. Your blood turns to ice. Before you call a priest, you should probably just call a sleep doctor. You've just met one of the stars of hypnagogic hallucinations. These are vivid, often terrifying, sensory experiences that happen as you're falling asleep. The waking up version is called a hypnopompic hallucination. They're basically dreams that have escaped their cage. Normally, when you enter REM sleep, your brain paralyzes your body, we'll get to that later, and starts the dream movie. It's a closed door, private screening inside your skull. But when you're exhausted, the system gets sloppy. The part of your brain responsible for generating dreams, the puns, starts its work a little too early while your eyes are still open and processing the real world. So, your brain tries to do two things at once. It's trying to render your bedroom with the laundry on the chair and the weird crack in the ceiling. And it's trying to render a nightmare about a shadowy demon. The result is a terrifying augmented reality experience. Your brain literally superimposes the dream onto your reality. It's not a ghost. It's not a demon. It's just your brain's tired, overworked special effects department doing a terrible compositing job. The same glitch can make you hear things, too. Whispers, footsteps, music, a doorbell ringing. Your brain is just leaking raw dream data into your waking perception. So the next time you see a spider the size of a dinner plate crawling down your wall as you drift off, just remember, it's not real. It's just a sign you need to go to bed earlier, because your brain is a terrible projectionist. Number 8. The Brain Reboot you're driving home after a ridiculously long shift. The highway lights are a hypnotic, blurry stream. You're staring straight ahead, you think. You remember passing the big billboard for the discount mattress store. The next thing you know, your three exits past your own, and you have a cold, hollow feeling in your stomach because you cannot, for the life of you, remember driving the last five miles. You didn't teleport. You just had a micro-sleep. And it is terrifying. A micro-sleep is a brief, involuntary episode of sleep that can last from a fraction of a second to 30 seconds. The scariest part? You often don't even know it happened. Your eyes can remain open. You can look for all intents and purposes like you are awake and functioning. But your brain has checked out. It's gone. When your brain is desperately sleep-deprived, it will start to take matters into its own hands. It won't wait for you to find a comfy bed. It will just... shut down parts of itself for a few seconds to conserve energy. The thalamus a sort of gatekeeper for sensory information, just closes up shop. The cerebral cortex, the part responsible for conscious thought, goes dark. It's the biological equivalent of your computer freezing for a few seconds. 
The screen is stuck, the mouse doesn't move, and then suddenly it catches up. Except you're not a laptop. You're a 4,000 pound metal machine hurtling down a freeway at 70 miles per hour. During that two second freeze, you're just a meat puppet with its foot on the gas. Studies have shown that after just one all-nighter, the brain is riddled with these little local pockets of sleep, even while you're walking around. Your brain isn't just tired. It's actively putting parts of itself to bed without your permission. It's a forced nap on a neurological level, and you don't even get the benefit of feeling rested afterward. Number seven, word salad. You're trying to tell a story. It's a good story. But you get to the crucial part, and you need a specific word. It's right there, on the tip of your tongue. You know it. You can feel its shape, but you can't say it. Your brain offers you nothing. Just a blank space where a word should be. So you start gesturing wildly. I need the, you know, the, the metal water holder, the hot thing, for tea. You sound like a confused toddler. This is what happens when the language center of your brain starts running on fumes. When you're sleep deprived, two key areas, Broca's area and Wernicke's area, which handle speech production and comprehension, get sluggish. The connections between your thoughts and the words to express them become weak and staticky, like a bad cell phone signal in a tunnel. Your brain knows what it wants to say. The concept of kettle is there. But the signal to retrieve that specific sound label from your memory banks gets lost in transit. So, your brain starts to improvise, spitting out related concepts. Hot. Water. Metal. In a desperate attempt to build a bridge to the missing word. This is why tired people tend to ramble, use filler words, and speak in vague, meandering sentences. It's not just finding words, either. Your tone of voice goes haywire. A tired brain has a harder time controlling prosody the rhythm and pitch of speech. That's why you start talking in a flat, robotic monotone. Or why your attempt at a sarcastic joke comes out sounding dead serious and a little bit threatening. You're not losing your mind. Your brain's internal thesaurus has just been temporarily taken offline for maintenance. And the only fix is a hard reboot, also known as a nap. Until then, you'll just have to point and grunt like our ancestors, who probably had a much better excuse. Number six, the sudden sob story. You're scrolling through social media at 1 a.m. You come across a video of a baby elephant sneezing. It's cute, sure. But suddenly, your eyes are welling up. A tear rolls down your cheek. You are genuinely, deeply moved by this sneezing baby elephant. An hour later, you can't find the TV remote and you're filled with a white-hot rage that feels completely out of proportion to the situation. Welcome to the wonderful world of emotional dysregulation, brought to you by exhaustion. Your brain has a built-in babysitter for your emotions. It's called the prefrontal cortex. This is the sophisticated, logical, adult part of your brain. Its job is to keep your more primal, emotional centers, specifically the amygdala, in check. The amygdala is basically a hysterical toddler with a megaphone. It's responsible for raw, powerful emotions like fear, anger, and sadness. Under normal circumstances, when the amygdala screams, we're all going to die because the remote is gone, the prefrontal cortex steps in and says, Hey, calm down. It's probably just under the couch cushion. Let's not overreact. But when you're tired, your prefrontal cortex is one of the first things to get sleepy. It gets slow, lazy, and its connection to the amygdala weakens. It essentially puts its feet up and stops paying attention. This leaves the amygdala completely unsupervised. It's a toddler left alone in a room full of fireworks and matches. The result is that your emotional response has become 60% more intense and completely untethered from reality. Small frustrations become sources of apocalyptic rage. Vaguely sweet things become profoundly moving tearjerkers. You're not more in touch with your feelings. Your brain's emotional volume knob is just broken, and it's stuck on max. So, no, you're not having a breakdown over a car insurance commercial. The bouncer for your brain's drama club just went on a very long coffee break. Number five, the autopilot problem. You get in your car to drive to a new restaurant you've been wanting to try. You know the way. You've looked at the map. You make a left, then a right. And 20 minutes later, you find yourself pulling into the parking lot of your office. The office you left an hour ago. You've been driving on pure, unthinking autopilot. This is your brain being lazy. And efficient. But mostly lazy. Your brain is an energy hog, and it's always looking for shortcuts. One of its favorite shortcuts is to create and strengthen neural pathways for repetitive tasks. This is how you learn to ride a bike or type without looking. The behavior becomes so ingrained it's automatic. 
the basal ganglia takes over, and your conscious mind is free to think about other things, like what you're having for dinner. This system is great, until you're tired. When your brain is exhausted, it doesn't want to waste precious energy carving out a new neural path to that restaurant. It wants to take the big, wide, well-paved eight-lane superhighway it already built, the one that leads to work. So it defaults to the path of least resistance. You can be fully awake for this. You'll stop at red lights, use your turn signals, and navigate traffic. But the part of your brain responsible for goal-oriented action has just clocked out. Your body is performing a complex sequence of actions based on old programming, while your conscious mind is basically a passenger staring out the window. It's the ultimate form of muscle memory, but for your entire life's routine. It's why you might put cereal in the fridge and milk in the cupboard. Your brain isn't broken. It's just running an old familiar script because it's too tired to learn its new lines. Your brain is just an overzealous GPS that stubbornly refuses to update its maps. Number four, exploding head. You're lying in bed in that peaceful silence just before sleep. Suddenly, a sound rips through your head. It's a deafeningly loud bang, like a gunshot, a cymbal crash, or a bomb exploding right next to your ear. It's so violent it makes you jolt upright, your heart racing. You look around. Nothing has fallen. There's no one there. The sound wasn't in your room. It was inside your skull. This is, and I am not making this up, called exploding head syndrome. Despite the horrifying name, it's completely harmless. It's a type of hypnagogic hallucination, but it's purely auditory, and it's always a loud, meaningless noise. There's no pain, just shock and confusion. Scientists aren't 100% sure what causes it, but the leading theory is that it's another symptom of a sloppy brain shutdown. As you fall asleep, your brainstem is supposed to gradually inhibit your auditory and motor neurons. Think of it like a sound engineer slowly pulling down all the faders on a mixing board. But in exploding head syndrome, something goes wrong. Instead of a smooth, gradual fade-out, a whole chunk of auditory neurons misfires and shuts down all at once. It's like the sound engineer, instead of using the faders, just yanks a huge bundle of cables out of the board at the same time, creating a massive burst of neural static. Your brain interprets this sudden, chaotic neural activity as an incredibly loud noise. It's a neurological backfire, a short circuit in your head's sound system, it's most common during periods of extreme stress and fatigue, when your brain is already struggling to perform its basic functions. It's completely benign, which is honestly the most insulting part. It's not a sign of a tumor or an aneurysm. It's just your own brain playing a terrifying, pointless jump scare prank on you for absolutely no reason. Number three, the human statue. This is the one you've heard about. This is the stuff of nightmares. You wake up, your mind is clear. You are completely conscious. You can see your room, you can hear the hum of the refrigerator, but you can't move. Not a muscle. Your arms and legs are pinned down by an invisible weight. You try to scream, but you can't even open your mouth. You can only make a tiny, pathetic whimper. You are trapped, a prisoner inside your own body. And that's when you realize you're not alone. This is sleep paralysis. It is, without a doubt, one of the most terrifying glitches the human brain can produce. And it's caused by the same system that's supposed to protect you. When you enter REM sleep, the stage where you have your most vivid dreams, your brain releases neurotransmitters that essentially paralyze your voluntary muscles. This is called rematonia, and it's a good thing. It's a safety feature that prevents you from physically acting out your dreams. It's the reason you don't actually try to fly when you're dreaming you're Superman. Sleep paralysis happens when this system gets its timing wrong. Your mind wakes up, but the paralysis switch is still flipped on. You become conscious before your brain has given you back the controls to your body. You are, for all intents and purposes, a ghost driving a statue. The terrifying hallucinations, the demon on your chest, the old hag in the corner, the shadowy intruders, are a ghastly cocktail of two things. First, you have the same hypnopompic dream leaking we talked about earlier. Your brain is still partially in a dream state, so it projects your nightmares onto reality. Second, your brain is panicking. It's sending signals to move, but nothing is happening. It can't understand why, so it invents a reason. I can't move because something is holding me down. And then it helpfully generates a hallucination of that very thing. It's the ultimate biological prank. Your brain locks you in a closet, tells you there's a monster in there with you, and then forgets where it put the key. Number two, the phantom buzz. You're trying to fall asleep, but the gentle hum of the air conditioner is starting to sound weird. If you listen closely, you can almost hear a melody, a faint repetitive tune. 
or maybe it's voices, whispering just below the threshold of understanding. You know it's just a machine, but your brain swears there's a pattern there. There's a signal in the noise. Your brain is a pattern-seeking machine. It's what we do. We see faces in clouds, animals in wood grain, and conspiracies in random events. This tendency, called pareidolia, is usually a visual thing. But when you're tired, you can get auditory pareidolia. Your auditory cortex is working overtime to make sense of the world, even when you're half asleep. When it's presented with a constant, meaningless sound like white noise from a fan, a running shower, or static, a tired brain gets bored, and a bored, tired brain starts to create its own entertainment. It will desperately search for patterns in the randomness, and if it can't find any, it will invent them. It latches onto tiny, coincidental fluctuations in the sound waves and amplifies them, interpreting them as a beat, a melody, or even human speech. Your brain is essentially remixing the sound of your furnace into a spooky ghost mixtape. It's the same reason people used to think they could hear messages when they played records backward. It's not Satan. It's just your brain's overactive, exhausted DJ trying to make a banger out of nothing. Number one, the memory thief. You're having an argument with your partner. You said you would take out the trash yesterday. You insist. They look at you, completely baffled. No, I didn't. That conversation never happened. You are 100% certain it did. You can remember the details, where you were standing, what they were wearing, but they are just as certain you're wrong. And the scary part is, they probably are. Sleep deprivation is a memory thief, but it's not a clean, professional thief that just takes things. It's a sloppy, chaotic vandal. It doesn't just steal your memories, it breaks into your brain's filing system, tears up documents, shoves them into the wrong folders, and forges new ones, just for fun. Sleep, particularly deep and REM sleep, is absolutely crucial for memory consolidation. It's the process where your brain takes the flimsy, short-term memories of the day and transfers them to more stable, long-term storage. It's like a librarian carefully cataloging and shelving all the new books. When you don't sleep, that librarian is gone. The books are just left in a messy pile on the floor. Your brain struggles to distinguish between what actually happened, what you dreamed happened, and what someone else told you happened. The source of information gets blurred. Did you actually lock the front door, or did you just think about locking it? Did your friend tell you that story, or did you see it in a movie? Researchers have found that sleep-deprived people are shockingly susceptible to forming false memories. They can be convinced they saw footage of a news event that never occurred, or even be made to confess to a minor crime they didn't commit, complete with rich, fabricated details. Your tired brain will desperately try to fill in the blanks, and it will do so with whatever scraps of information it can find. Dreams, assumptions, suggestions. So that weird argument you swear you had? It might have just been a badly written scene from a dream you forgot to delete from your brain's hard drive. Your memories aren't a perfect recording of the past. They're a constantly updated story. And when the author is tired, the story gets weird. Okay, my brain's tired. I'm gonna go find more weird stuff. You know what to do if you want to see it.